I'm finally done with the garage floor and I'm looking for a change of pace on my project. So here we are in the mud room. We can see here we've got some empty space. We've had a chair here before. Nothing really is kind of fit what we're looking for. So I think this is gonna be the next, pro next project. I wanna make a table, possibly a bench combination. You see we've got the window still covered here so it'd be nice to get this stuff off here on a table put the internet router on the table, possibly a lamp with a smart outlet. So we've got light if you're coming home late with a lamp, that would be nice without turning on the high light. Let's get after it. So we have just under 68 inches of width. If we came out 18 to 24 inches, that would be ideal size. So we'll work on this table first and the top of it. I'm no cabinet maker or furniture maker, but I found a method that works with me with the wood I have available and the tools I have available to make a nice looking piece of furniture. Here's my stockpile of wood. This is pretty special stuff because it comes from trees on our property. I cut down two years ago. I've got a video on that. Cut them down, Alaskan milled these boards. They've been sitting in the basement for a couple years. So they are fully dried and ready to make some furniture. You can see this was actually a pretty big, a pretty large choke cherry tree. The problem is uh, when you take these big slabs out of it, see how it warps and cracks. So this thing will do the trick. Maybe we'll cut it to length. See, it's definitely rough sawn. Alaskan mill, this one didn't cut so good. Probably uh, had some opportunity there, but this side is decent. I, we could plane this thing, get it in the shape. That's why we cut it extra thick when you Alaskan mill it, because you're gonna have some roughness to it that needs to be cleaned up. All right, we have our piece of wood here. I cut it to length just to set it in place and see what it looks like. Obviously, length is perfect, but we might need it a little wider. Okay, we're back at the wood stash. That 11 inches, it doesn't quite look good. I want to be around two feet width. So, Unfortunately, these are only about six inches, so I could add two of these, one to each side. Um, some of these aren't in the best shape, so they cracked down the middle, and basically I took my skill saw and just cut it. So we've got one decent edge, and then the other edge is a little rough, so we're gonna end up with a lot less than the six inches that it is. This one's split down the middle. This one is a little messed up on that end, so we're probably, if we did two six inches on, on either side, that would work. This one's probably in the best shape. It could give us the whole six. But I've got these longer ones here, which are in very good shape, and would be less work. It's just a bit of a shame because they're much longer and we'd be wasting some, but it makes our lives a lot easier. And I don't really have any plans for these. All right, I was just looking, I think we're gonna use this one and it has a crack up here anyway. So if we cut our length out of it, we should be good. the two boards that are going to make up my top I need to glue them together and you can see the edges here that we've got existing do not fit tight enough for a glue joint normally what you do to correct these board edges and prep them for a glue joint is to run them through a jointer 
Now, I don't have a jointer or access to a jointer easily. Um, so what I'm going to do is clamp these boards together and then use a powered hand plane to clean up the, the joint. So this is a Performax muffle uh, from Menards. I did a full review on this before. It's been uh, a pretty handy little tool to have in the arsenal. Um, it's not as good as a full-on woodworking jointer, but it seems to do the job. So I ran it over these two surfaces together. It's just wide enough to catch both in a pass uh, to prove the straightness of these joints. Probably took five or six passes and we got things cleaned up pretty good. Now the proof is here. We take the clamps apart, put the board, that joint back together and do a visual inspection of it. And it tightened things up nice, good enough to where I'd say we can move on to the next stage, which is gluing. We've got our boards glued together. I'm not gonna lie, it is difficult working with these large Alaskan mill pieces. They've warped, they're not kiln dried. This is about as natural as it gets. Um, the good news is the bottom surface, the leg system we're gonna use can accommodate warping and differences. So we just need the top surface to be relatively flat and smooth. We can use to let the legs to level things out. So once this is dry, we're gonna go back to our electric planer and get this thing whipped into some what of a shape. But the look I'm going for here is rustic, but yet refined. Like I said, I'm no furniture maker. Even if I went for super refined and polished, I'm not gonna be able to get it with the tools I have. So I'm gonna kind of work with this and actually the style I kind of like. So it's, it has some of those nicks and gouges from being Alaskan milled and hand worked but yet yeah, looks like a finished piece instead of just a log that you put in your house. So hopefully this thing sticks together. I'm confident it, it will. The, the glue, the wood glue these days is pretty forgiving. It's good, but you do need a reasonable fit between those boards to get it to stick. Hopefully this sticks together and we can move on. While the glue on our board is setting up, we can work on the legs. And what we're gonna use is a steel product, some steel piping, this is not plumbing piping though. It's a product called Steel Tech. They sell it at Lowe's. And the big advantage over plumbing piping is it's not threaded connections. There's slip joints in all of these components. So you can cut them to length and you don't need to thread the connection then. That's the big disadvantage to using a standard black pipe or galvanized pipe. For plumbing, you need the threading equipment and it just, it can be done, it just makes life a lot harder. So these are nice. They've got these set screws. You simply slide your pipe in, tighten it up. And it's also, as I said, very forgiving because the slip joint has some play so we can easily level out our feet by just loosening the set screw and then tightening back up where it needs to be. So no more rocky tables. So what I'm gonna do with these components is pretty easy. Uh, we've got these flanges. I'm gonna use those for feet, put some felt underneath where I'll sit on the floor. And then the top, put another one of those and screw it to the underside of our tabletop. I'll likely also need a crossbar for support and we can get this other component that clamps on here and then we can do a cross piece between two legs to stiffen it. The components I have here are left over, or I should I say reclaimed from doing my golf simulator. I used this, I used these components to do some side netting. I've got a whole different setup I'm gonna go with there, so I've taken this down as I've kind of revamped the garage here. Uh, I'm going to repurpose them for this table. I don't have quite enough here, so I'm gonna have to do some shopping, but I'm gonna start um, by cutting the legs. So I'm gonna go between countertop height and like end table height. So end table height's 26 inches, countertop is 36. I'm gonna float in that 30 inch, 32 inches to the tabletop. I think that's gonna work good for us. So I'm gonna cut my pipe at 30 inch lengths. 
The other good thing about this, um, you can use a cutoff tool, a power tool, but a hacksaw does just fine uh, for the limited number of cuts you need to do for making some furniture. I used standard wood glue on the joint. Thankfully, when I popped off these clamps, the tabletop stuck together. So then I took out my powered hand planer. I did a review of this in a separate video, Master Force, pretty low cost tool um, from Menards, but makes the life a lot easier to finish this. Ideally, I, I'd put this through a, a large planer and a drum sander and get it perfect, but I don't have access to that. So uh, I use this method with this powered hand planer and kind of go at it different directions uh, you can see here I'm now working it uh, from end to end long ways after doing some diagonal cuts to get this tabletop cleaned up. On the underside, I didn't do much, just took one light cut, uh, kept the rough sawn look on the underside. But on the top here, to get a lamp to sit decent, to get items to sit okay, and I didn't want it super rough and give it kind of a semi-finished look. This thing takes a little bit, but much easier than doing this by hand. I used to do this with a, uh, a manual hand plane. It can be done, uh, like I said, just a little more time consuming. You can see, took a couple other directional cuts on it, uh, going lengthways again here, and almost have it completely cleaned up. Then I finished it off with an orbital sanding. Uh, final grit was 120. Here is our final plane and sanded tabletop. It's looking pretty good. Now the next step is to protect it. I'm not gonna stain this or anything. I like the natural cherry look, so I'm gonna use this white on poly. Uh, it's the most user-friendly way of protecting the surface that I found. You don't need a brush or anything like that. It works really good. I'm gonna start with the underside. which is significantly less finished. I did do a rough sanding on it to kind of wear down the high edges and give it a more warm look instead of freshly cut look. So we're gonna start with this and get our poly. It's been about a half hour since I put the first coating on and it's already dry enough to flip this over and do our top surface. The coolest part of this is watching where we finish this grain. This side I think is going to look especially good and this grain is really going to pop. Let's see how it looks. To me this is a beautiful piece of wood. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But we've got some evidence. We still have some little bit of evidence of the hand work that went into it. Highlighted here by a little bit darker spots. We've got just a little bit of bark left from the live edge. We've got some knots and character, but then um, we've got areas that are near perfect with that beautiful cherry grain and coloration. I think this is going to be a pretty nice table. The next step was to lay out these pipe flanges to hold the legs. So I just used a speed square to make sure that they're roughly in the same location and then marked all the holes Then did some pilot drilling for the screws that I'm going to use to go into the tabletop. As I've said, this table is not perfectly flat or square. These boards have warped and I haven't taken all of that out of there. I want to retain some of that character. So the good thing about using these steel tech components, you can see these slip joints are relatively forgiving. So we can have a lot of adjustment in here. So what I've done is installed our legs and just snugged up the set screws a little bit on the legs. Now we're going to add our other components. 
Uh, because this is a relatively wide, because this is relatively long, wide table, I want to add some extra support to these legs. Just these legs alone is going to be a bit wobbly. So we've got these other components that we can add on and put some crossbars. So I'm going to mock these up and then measure the length of the crossbars I need, cut those and install them. There is the first look at our table with our rough sawn cherry taken from the property. I think it looks pretty darn good. Let's get this thing in place and see what it looks like there. I set the table in place here and making final adjustments using the Allen wrench and the set screws to improve the squareness and the level of the table uh, with it sitting on the actual floor in the location where it's going to live. If you like this sort of thing, please consider subscribing to my channel. Here's the table after a few weeks of use. You can tell it's quite good at holding things. Uh, the one change I made there on those cross supports for the legs, I moved that down so it's below the outlet and doesn't interfere with plugging in the lamp. Thanks for watching. Adios.